Welcome to BizTech's C-Suite Conversation okay. Show. Our guest for today is Manish Bai. He's the founder and CEO of Uno Bank. Now, Uno Bank is part of Uno Asia, which is a Singapore headquartered fintech with a vision to create the first full spectrum digital bank in Southeast Asia. The company is one of five recipients to receive a license by Banco Central and Filipinas to launch Uno Digital Bank in the Philippines. Now with that, welcome to the show, Manish. Brian, thank you for having me here and excited to have this conversation. Now for a start, Manish, give us an overview of Uno Asia and what it was set up to do. I will start with what you used to introduce us, a credit-led full spectrum digital bank. So what, what do you mean by that? It means that Uno Bank offers one trusted interface to meet all your life's financial needs with speed and ease. That is, it allows you to save, borrow, transact, protect, and invest. But at the same time, our main mode and how we lead, how we penetrate the market, what's our differentiation, what's our standout strategy is credit or lending, unsecured loans, because that's a big problem statement to be solved in this region. In addition to when we talk of financial inclusion, credit inclusion is a huge part of it. Now, the founders or incorporators, primary incorporators of Uno Bank is the Singapore headquartered uh, fintech, Uno Asia, of which also I'm a co-founder. Uh, and so is Uno Bank, where I am now spearheading this strategy, uh, both as a founder and the CEO of the organization. Now, one of the key things, Manish, uh, is, is the following. You've chosen Philippines to set up your first base. You've got your license uh, as one of the five digital-only banks uh, uh, in the Philippines. Walk us through that selection process. And I, I'm, I'm assuming that's something to do with the fact that over 53% of the adult population in the Philippines uh, doesn't really have basic deposit account services. Sure. Just to set one fact correct, Brian, uh, actually there are six digital bank licenses mm -hmm. uh, which have been awarded. Uh, going back to why Philippines. So when we were looking at where should our first venture be in Southeast Asia, Philippines portrayed a very, very promising pictures. Let's look at even the pre-COVID period where Philippines was growing at 8% GDP, one of the highest growing country in, the, in Asia and definitely in the region. Even post-COVID, uh, the latest data, 2022 data puts it as uh, just number two behind Vietnam. On the other hand, you see the mobile bank phone penetration and internet penetration uh, was very high with more than 80 million people using uh, smartphones. Uh, it's a very young population with the median age being uh, 25 and a growing population. So, while on one side, all this picture is great, but on the other side, the problems were equally high. As you alluded to it, even today, 60% plus people in Philippines don't have a proper bank account. Uh, of course, the COVID helped in the digitalization, but it's still a high number. Only 10% of people uh, borrow from the formal sector. So when you piece everything together, uh, Philippines provided an excellent opportunity and a market uh, where one can make a meaningful difference and impact. And the regulators of the country were very, very promising and supportive. They had very clear directions towards digitalization of payments. They had very clear direction towards issuing digital bank licenses. And after Singapore, they have acted one of the fastest in the region. Uh, so, and the initial track record, what we have seen and the numbers which we are seeing and how this whole thing is getting built out, we are absolutely convinced and elated about our decision to have chosen Philippines to make the first impact. Could you share with us your, that some of these numbers in terms of where you are at uh, uh, at this point of time since you've launched? So we did a commercial launch only last quarter, uh, Q4, 
uh, this was around both the Philippines FinTech Festival and Singapore FinTech Festival. Uh, with a commercial launch, we ran a bit of beta and slow paced uh, for the initial uh, few weeks. Uh, but happy to share that just on 31st March, we closed with our first uh, full quarter of operations after launch. And we are at 150,000 plus customers already onboarded. Fantastic. How did you achieve that uh, in such a short period of time? What has been the go-to-market strategy? Our go-to-market strategy has been a combination of our own digital app, as well as strong ecosystem partnerships. In this particular case right now, there are two partnerships which are already in play. Uh, one is with uh, the biggest uh, wallet company in Philippines, Gcash, and other one is with Trusting Social, which processes alternate credit data and is a pretty well-known name in the region. Uh, in terms of our own app, we were very sure of the strategy that when we launch, we need to make sure that it has payments enabled. Uh, it has options for people to kind of cash in at multiple points. So we are, were enabled on day one for people to cash in on 7,500 outlets. Similarly, cash out at 4,500 outlets. And these are pound, point of sale outlets, Absolutely. physical outlets. Absolutely. Uh, these are outlets. And I can share the names like for one, for example, is 7-Eleven. So every 200 meters, 100 meters, you have a 7-Eleven, especially in, in metro areas. And so anyone can go in and cash in and open an account from there. I mean, cash in and fund the account. Similarly, to cater to emergency needs of money in remote areas, we have tied up with different kind of outlets who are present in every small barangay or, or city. So combination of these, these are the things which, which was our strategy and both have played out very, very well, uh, leading to this phenomenal growth. So essentially, and, and I, can, I, can I summarize your, your, your key advantage there is this, it's an O2O -O strategy, it's an online to offline and, and vice versa to feed that growth. 150,000 in, in a quarter is, is, is a very good number. Absolutely. And, and it's just the big thing because our real differentiation, as I mentioned earlier, comes from making an impact in formal credit. Uh, we also have launched our straight through processing loan on the app just in March. And it's, it's just going in a beta mode, but the initial traction, uh, it's just been a few weeks has been phenomenal. And so this is a very big issue because one of the things is there's a social purpose around this as well, because the informal sector perhaps um, gives out loans to some of the vulnerable in perhaps less than uh, uh, less than favorable terms. So when, when you do a, a more structured uh, uh, lending to uh, digitally to these underserved markets, they have ac access to options that they never had before. Absolutely. And I'll use this opportunity to also to share uh, a statement which I very firmly believe in. I always talk about sustainable financial inclusion. So while financial inclusion looks great and it's very impactful, if you're not sustainable, if you don't do it in a, a sensible way, uh, that you are ultimately profitable, everything kind of collapses as a house of, house of cards. Uh, so there are two steps to it. On one side, absolutely, we are bringing forward terms which are much more favorable in terms of low interest rates, transparency, no hidden fees, quicker decision-making. That's what I meant from straight through processing. At the same time, it does not mean that it is meaningless uh, credit dole out. Uh, there are huge <laughs> of checks and controls and qualifications and, and target set. Okay, I've got to ask you that, and, and I'm going to interrupt you here because EKYC or Know Your Customer is fundamental in this case. How do you tackle that important problem? Absolutely. So that's where technology comes into a big place. So it's a combination of three things. It's a combination of advanced technology. It's a combination of uh, processes uh, which you put in place and it's the culture which you want to drive. So let me talk about the technology. So we have used one of the best technologies available in terms of processing 
uh, the IDs uh, digitally. And when you say it processes IDs digitally, it also does the first level of check if there's a fake ID or, and, and, then, and then there are verification checks in terms of liveliness, you blink, whether it's the same person which is holding the ID. You augment it further through really subscribing and using databases and services like name screening, blacklist. Uh, so you weed out bad actors uh, in, the, in the sense that uh, fraud is very, very prevalent all through um, Southeast Asia and everywhere, any emerging market which you look at it. And third, where I kept about is the process and the people where there is constant and regular review, which keeps on having. And we are not shy of off-coding off people as well, because sometimes to kind of maintain and grow and build a healthy system uh, is absolutely critical. Now, the other thing that is very important, Manish, is security. I mean, that's a key concern. How are you, as a, a, a neobank, um, taking care of the, 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 the needs to protect the data, obviously, from your, for your customer base, and also protect yourselves from ransomware and cyber attacks, which are becoming more and more prevalent. Bang on. Trust is something which we keep talking about every day. And uh, to build that trust, one of the first steps is to give, create an absolute assurance to our people that their money is safe and the bank which they are banking with has taken all the steps in terms of protection from cyber attacks and hacks and criminals. So the way we are tackling is, is this is one area where absolutely not cutting corners. We have, even though we are a startup, we have invested in the best of cloud systems. Our entire stack is on AWS. Uh, most of the tools which we use are, uh, again, with uh, very well-known uh, global brands. Um, we have invested in security operations, uh, real-time monitoring, uh, in terms of making sure that there is there is actually like you see a, a detective room where people are uh, people <laughs> are looking at what activity is happening, who's trying to do what uh, uh, with the systems, and that's a continuous uh, process which we have to just build as a culture to do in day in day out because you have to stay one step ahead uh, in technology uh, because there's an other side which is also very very smart. Uh, so those those checks and balances have been have been put and a continuous area of focus for us. Now, Manish, I want to zoom out a little bit out of the Philippines because the Philippines is your first rollout. Obviously, you're getting your systems and processes and stuff in place, but you have as a company far broader uh, ambitions around Southeast Asia and the market potential is significant because if you just go back to that Google, Tamasic and Bain and Company study in 2019, which talked about the, the opportunities in digital banking, you've got 60% of Southeast Asians who are underbanked and unbanked. What's your strategy beyond Philippines? We definitely want to be a regional player to be present in three or four markets in a five to seven year plan. Our focus for the immediate future for the next two years is on Philippines and really to build on these partnership and, and take this number of active clients to a couple of millions, as well as uh, higher credit penetration. But in three to five years, we will be looking at other markets. Um, there's some prelim thoughts around that already. And, and as and when we are in that stage, uh, we will be sharing more information openly uh, about our presence in other countries. But absolutely the plan to be a regional player with presence in three or four countries. Now, a final question, uh, Manish, what would you like to leave our audience with as a final thought um, before we end the conversation? That digital banks are safe. They are smarter, faster, and that's the future uh, to deliver better and tactical services to the customers. Manish, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. I enjoyed our conversation. Thank you, Brian. Enjoy talking to you as well. We've been speaking to Manish Fahai. He's the founder and CEO of Uno Bank. I'm Brian Fernandez, and you've been watching and listening to 
BizTech's C-Suite Conversation Show. This interview will be on our website, www.biztech.asia, as well as our social media platforms. It'll also be on our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thank you.